Awaken to a season of anticipation. God is near. Come away from times of weariness. God offers us hope, peace, joy, and love. Let us worship God together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
church. A warm welcome to everyone who's here, visitors and members alike. Whether you sit here on the sanctuary or watching the video at home, we are glad that you're with us. The heart of our church is summed up in these words, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Every year we share communion during Advent, and today is that day. In our church, we practice open communion, meaning that everybody is invited to partake. No one is excluded. If you're a visitor and would like more information about the church, or if you have a prayer request, please enter the information on the welcome card in the pew rack in front of you. Put it in one of the collection boxes after the service, or give it to one of the ministers or the usher. Help beautify our church even more this Christmas through flower memorials and tributes. December 14th is the deadline. All of the details are in your order of worship. We're gonna have some fun this afternoon at Christmas Craft Workshop at 1 p.m. Today, children, family, singles, members, relatives, friends, people down the street, bring everybody. It's gonna be great fun. We're gonna make a lot of Christmas crafts drink some hot chocolate, eat some cookies, and have a really, really, really fun time. So that's one o'clock downstairs in the parish hall. Be someone's angel. Our angel trees are in the chapel foyer and near the parish hall, as are the barrels for our coat and sock drive, which is going very well. Next Sunday at three o'clock, we have our traditional blue Christmas service for those who find the holidays difficult. Finally, on December 24th, we have our traditional 5 p.m. children's Christmas pageant and our 8 p.m. candlelight Christmas Eve service with the traditional harp prelude at 7.30. Finally, you need our church and our church needs you. If you can fill out a 2023 estimated giving form, we would greatly appreciate it. The estimated numbers help us plan our 2023 budget. You'll find forms in the pew racks as well as near the entrances. For your prayers today, the family of Frederick Cleaver, Frederick, brother of Sue Federa, died on December 8th. The wake is this afternoon from 1 to 6, and the service is in the morning at 9.30, both at village chapels in Middle Village. 
The burial will be tomorrow at 11.30 in Nassau Knowles. And now our children are dismissed for Sunday school. Youth are invited to stay in the service and everybody else who was able, please stand and greet those around you. Good morning. Our scripture lesson today comes from Isaiah chapter 11, verses one through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. <clears throat> Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. <clears throat> the cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child will play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. In the reading of these words, we may hear the word of the Lord.
Please take your order of service, and we will join together as we read our call to prayer. Lord Jesus, Master of both the light and the darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for Christmas. We who are anxious over many things look forward to your coming among us. We whose hearts are heavy seek the joy of your presence. Let us pray. Loving God, in the midst of this season of peace, we admit it is difficult to find peace at times. We carry heavy burdens and we are in need of your love and your care in our lives. O oh God, empty our hearts to make room for the birth of something new and altogether unforeseen. Your goodness enters into our lives and the people who surround us. Love and sustain us. Oh God, there are many needs in our world today. We ask that where there is violence, we would find a peaceful solution. Where there is hurt, we would find ways to mend. Where there is hunger and thirst, we would find ways to quench and satisfy. We pray for those who are separated from loved ones on this day. We ask that you would comfort and sustain us as we seek homecomings and reunions in the next few weeks. O oh God, we pray for those in our very family of faith this morning. We pray for the family of Frederick Cleaver, Sue's brother. O oh God, we ask that you would be a source of comfort and deep peace for this family in the days and weeks to come. Prepare us now in this time of worship and communion and celebration. May your spirit guide us and give us evidences of places in our lives that need healing. Open our hearts that we may see you with a fresh vision, and that we might sense your presence in a new way today. We ask these things through Christ. Amen.
am not a fan of flying. As a matter of fact, I truly hate it. And I know this sounds really strange coming from someone whose spouse works for an airline. I know it sounds completely ridiculous. But around the age of 35 or so, something shifted internally within me. My go with the flow, embrace the adventure, YOLO attitude of my 20s has long set sail. Flying for me is now filled with mostly angst, a good amount of box breathing techniques, and a desperate search for a familiar rom-com on the TV plane to take my mind off the fact that I'm flying 30,000 feet in the air in a metal tube going about 400 miles an hour. But on one recent flight, something extraordinary happened, and for the first time in a long time, I experienced peace in the friendly skies. Many of you know that my husband, Jacob, was hired in August of 2021 as a flight dispatcher for JetBlue, New York's airline. What is a dispatcher, one might ask? Well, let me tell you. Now, knowing what I know, they are, well, everything. Dispatchers arrive to work, and they are assigned about 35 flights over a 10-hour shift in a general geographical region for that day. For every one of those flights, the dispatchers carefully plan the flight route, they communicate with air traffic control, they study weather in the region, and they consult with on-site meteorologists, they calculate the exact amount of fuel for every flight according to atmospheric conditions, runway lengths, and visibilities for both the departure and arrival airports. They decide if an aircraft is too heavy or if there's misplaced weight. They are the ones who tell the pilot to ask for seven volunteers to go on a different flight. So you can blame him. <laughs> the aircraft is controlled 50-50 by the pilot and the dispatcher, who is in constant communication with the captain the entire flight. Should there be a me mechanical issue, the captain calls the dispatcher to place through a technician, and the three of them together make safety decisions. Should there be a medical emergency, the dispatcher contacts the EMT and helps make a decision regarding a possible diversion, and then he reroutes, or she, reroutes the flight to a different airport arranging medics on the ground standing by. The dispatcher monitors flights en route and can see reports of turbulence and in mid-flight change a route or altitude to ensure smoother sailing. They study volcanic ash, they study wildfire residue, and they make decisions about landing approaches and takeoff speeds. Dispatchers are to airline flights what mission control is to NASA, truly. So this past September, I am in the Atlanta airport, frantically trying to get home to my family after a long weekend away where I had officiated the wedding of my godniece. Jacob had to work most all weekend, leaving my preteen and teenager texting me regularly about their perception of lack of food in the house and their ongoing sibling disputes over literally everything. So my flight departure time back to New York keeps getting postponed every time I look at the big board. My anxiety, not postponed. Flying standby can be tormenting at times because you never know which flight you're going to make. And the crew behind the desk finally calls my name, and I am given the very last spot on this flight. I settle into my seat, and I prepare to do my box breathing, when suddenly I get a text from Jacob on my phone. And on the text is a picture of his computer screen with a flashing dot and my flight number. Below the picture, he says, I've got you. Don't worry. Just hung up with the captain will be a great flight. I'll be watching you and talking to the captain the whole time. Enjoy your flight. I love you. Now let me tell you something. Having your spouse literally direct your flight beats any amount of box breathing or any familiar rom-coms that could be on the TV airplane on that day. 
It is the first time in more than 15 years that I feel complete peace high in the sky. His words, a sign of peace for me, knowing that all will be well, and it was. This Advent season, it draws us into peace. And much of the imagery that we see during this time, it attempts to settle our hearts on holy inner and outer calm. These symbols, they surround us, but often get lost in the holiday rush as we make that one last stop to get those few final gifts. Images of the manger scene draw us into the stillness of a sleeping newborn baby and this beaming new mother. Angels sit atop Christmas trees and adorn decorations, reminding us of the pronouncements of peace. Glowing candles and windows and on altar tables fix our glances on warmth and light. The beautiful lyrics of Christmas hymns reverberate in our lungs as we sing of Jesus' gospel of peace. These signs and symbols serve as touch points to help us connect back to the wonders of his love and images of heavenly peace. I've got you. I've been thinking about this imagery of these words as I ready myself for the season of supposed peace. Have you ever seen a mother console a crying child? Mama's got you. Shh, I've got you. You're okay. Have you ever done something a little scary for the first time and a friend accompanies you, reaching out their hand to assure you, hey, I've got you, I'm here. Have you ever seen a dad on a playground lifting his child up to reach the monkey bars and the child suddenly realizes the distance to the ground and lets go? The dad locks eyes with his son and says, I've got you, you're okay, I'm not going anywhere. This sentiment is the true essence and embodiment of peace, isn't it? Someone has us. We are not alone, and it's going to be okay. Perhaps the signs of this season and the signs from the beginning of creation all pronounce to us, I've got you. In our scripture lesson today, the prophet Isaiah helps us call to mind symbols of peace. Isaiah says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. And from this verse, the concept of the Jesse tree was birthed and is still prevalent in many Christian traditions throughout our world. It's called the Jesse tree as we remember Jesus' lineage tied all the way back to Jesse, the father of David, and even far beyond. Through these images, the Jesse tree tells us a story of God's continual promises of peace. We place ornaments on the Jesse tree as a symbol of God's thread of love since the beginning of creation. Each image a reminder from God, I'm here. One common symbol on the Jesse tree includes a world. The world or the globe reminds us of God's creativity from the beginning. We are reminded that God made us and formed us and fashioned us from the very stars that we see at night. We are made in the very image of God. Another common symbol is an ark or a rainbow. Through this symbol, we remember God's promise to Noah. Another symbol includes a tent or a camel. Through these symbols, we remember God's covenant with Abraham. We remember Abraham's journey into the great unknown, and we recall God's steady presence abiding with him every step of the way. Another symbol includes a cradle. The symbol, we remember God's promise to Sarah to conceive. And we remember Sarah's laughter as she finds out she will become a mother against all odds. We remember Isaac and a promise fulfilled. Another symbol includes the symbol of a lamb or a wolf, Through these symbols, we remember the prophet's visions of peace to come, two opposing creatures together living in harmony. Another symbol includes a seashell. Through the seashell, we are reminded of John the baptizer. We remember his mission to prepare the way for something great, to lay down the foundations for the coming of Christ into our lives. Another symbol is a heart. 
And with it, we remember Mary's heart as it leaps at the good news. She will become the mother of one who will make the crooked path straight and bring good news to the poor. We remember her joy and her quiet anticipation. Another symbol includes a pair of sandals. And through the sandals, we remember that dusty journey of the shepherds on that starry night. We remember their faith as they follow a star to find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And perhaps the most well-known symbol on the Jesse tree is the star. The star reminds us of a promise, a baby, the prince of peace. I wonder what signs of peace we have noticed recently. Are there faces of people that come to mind who speak peace to us when darkness starts to settle in our bones? Through their loving kindness, God says, I've got you. I'm here. Are there images that come to mind of something mundane or just ordinary that catches our attention and brings a calm that we didn't expect? And we know in that instance that all will be well. The signs of the season are all around us. And the signs and the symbols of peace are here. It is up to us to truly see them and to take notice. The Advent season is a time of preparation and waiting for God's grandest gesture of, I've got you, you are not alone. God comes to us through a tiny babe to live among us, to show us the very paths of peace. Emmanuel, God with us. A sign to me recently came through a recurring musical tune that I haven't thought about in years. The melody kept going through my mind, but I was unable to pin down the lyrics. Until a few days ago, during an unusual moment when the house was quiet, and suddenly the words started rushing back to me. The familiar tune is a song written by Christian music artist Michael W. Smith in the year of 1989. The song is called, All Is Well. And the words say this, All is well, all is well. Angels and people rejoice. For tonight darkness fell into the dawn of love's light. Sing Alle, sing Alleluia. All is well. Let there be peace on earth. Christ has come. Go and tell that he is in the manger. Sing Alle, sing Alleluia. All is well. Lift up your voice and sing. Born is now Emmanuel. Born is our Lord. All is well. All is well. The signs of peace surround us. and They are here. Emmanuel, God with us. In other words, I've got you. I'm here. All will be well. And may it be so. Amen.
Just a reminder that we practice open communion, meaning that absolutely everyone is invited to participate. No one is excluded. Also, please note that we have some gluten-free bread and that our grape juice is alcohol-free, hence juice. As we share communion today, may the gifts of bread and the cup remind us of God's glorious gift in the person of Jesus, born in a humble state on that starry night long, long ago. We remember that John the Baptist Call the people to live better lives and to prepare their hearts to meet Christ. Let us strive for better living, too, that we may be ready to encounter the Spirit of God in this joyous season. Would you please take your order of service, and we will join together as we read our prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we know that you love us and call us to fullness of life. But around and within us, we see the glorious of the world and of our lives. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us all the promises to our that your love may be shared in the lives we lead. Bless us as we receive them this day, and the strength Christ gives us. We offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, broken for you. As often as you need it, do so in remembrance of me.
Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. You please take your order of service and we will pray together our prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, you have, have called your people from east and west, the north and south, to share their communion with you. Take for these moments together. We have remembered the presence of Christ in our worship and in our daily lives. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us find and faithfully follow your will for our lives, not only during Advent, but every day, through our death on the Lord's Savior. And 
And now, in keeping with the ancient custom, uh, if you are able to stand, please do so, and pass the peace of Christ to those around you. Mm -hmm. now, may God bless us and keep us. May God watch over us in kindness, and may God grant us lives of joy and peace. Amen. Amen.